Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. Sorry for the delay in between videos. I've had a hectic month and I'm about to get on a plane this evening and just thought I'd see if I can do a, a quick September wrap up before I go and I still have to pack. So we'll try to be quick, but I actually have this quite bumper stack of books and I'm not sure how that's happened, but let's see if I can remember because when you go back to the beginning of September, um, my, memory, my memory of a couple of these is not great. So let's start with this one, The Yogini by Sangeeta or Sanjita Bandiopadhyay, and I apologize, I think I'm mispronouncing that. Um, translated by Arunava Sinha and published by Tilted Axis Press, which I love, and they do a lot of great works in translation. And this is about a woman called Romy, and she is struggling with her destiny or her fate. And it appears before what triggers her struggle is it appears in the form of a homeless man. And there's a word that they actually use because there's a whole translated no, neoti in the original Bangla. So the word neoti, uh, which can mean different things. But anyhow, she is married and has a job and then sees this man who she thinks is her fate and starts that starts to play on her mind. And what follows is that she sort of falls from society and pursues this fate and you you find it's from her point of view and she's not always reliable but for example she'll say she went into work and then her colleagues will comment on the fact that she hasn't been working very well and she sort of gets demoted to the night shift and things like that where you realize that she's possibly not performing and they might see her as being depressed and she's sleeping a lot and and so you sort of piece it together through other characters but um, she certainly has this she sort of um, comes unstuck and then it the ending whether she's sort of on the path to self-knowledge or self-destruction I thought the ending was a bit ambiguous but I'd love to know if you've read it what you made of it because the, by the end it almost becomes a bit surreal and I was I, I liked it but I wasn't sure I wasn't quite sure how to read the ending but I really loved the writing it was really lively and fresh and very frank she tells you things there are some wonderful characters her mother's a great character and when she's explaining the dynamic with her sister she says things like these things need to be explained they can't just be inferred and things like it's really um, upfront and candid and um, just very easy it's a style of writing that reads really effortlessly and it was yeah a real pleasure to read so i thoroughly enjoyed this it was very it felt original it wasn't like anything else I've read and um, yeah really enjoyed it so I recommend that one that's the Yogini and then in on to Egypt I read The Buried by Peter Hessler and I bought this one because I loved his book Country Driving which was uh, his travels through China so he's a journalist and was living in China for a long time. His wife is Leslie Chang, who wrote Factory Girls, which is a great book about the women and girls who leave their villages in rural China and come to work in the factories and the sort of conditions that they live in. So they're a really interesting couple and they decided to move to Egypt and it was just after the Arab Spring, or it was before the Arab Spring, I think, when they made the decision. But nevertheless, they still uh, decided to go. And they had twin, I think it's twin girls, so very young children. I think they were only maybe two or three when they moved. And they lived there for a, a few years. And so it's fascinating, his account, and he doesn't cover just the... The issues around the Arab Spring but just day-to-day -day life in Egypt and in Cairo they're living but also he travels a lot out of Cairo and goes to look at some of the digs and goes to a town where there are all these Chinese lingerie shops and he has a good take on that because he's lived in China and he 
can speak the language and so on. So he gets a bit of an inside story about that phenomenon. And it's the fact that they have a really good business selling lingerie because there are a lot of Egyptian people where that might be an uncomfortable thing to buy from an Egyptian man. And then a lot of Egyptian women are not encouraged to work. So it would be the man, you know, in the shop. And this really interesting dynamic. And that's just one example, but something that he, you know, found very curious. And um, the cultural differences there as well and how the Chinese often the Chinese business people would work as a husband and wife team in a way that didn't happen so much with Egyptian families. And he talks about the segregation of women and how he finds it as a man, um, how it is for him interacting with women uh, when he can't see their faces and when they're um, just the, the social differences, I suppose. And that's one of the th big things that he thinks is would you know holds the country back and another one which is really interesting is an issue around numbers and how they deal with numbers and um, he talks a lot about even the way numbers are written and maths and so on it's really interesting there's a lot in it obviously it's a really big book but his style is very engaging um, sometimes funny but quite rigorous as well and he's just really curious and open-minded and it gave me a good insight into Egypt and it wasn't a country I knew really anything about so I came to it quite cold and found it really fascinating. So that is The Buried, An Archaeology of the Egyptian Revolution by Peter Hessler and then, of course, the big 10th of September, the big release of The Testaments. So Annie and Amanda and I read this for the podcast and we had mixed views. I quite enjoyed it, but I came up against the expectations, of course, and being a book, a shortlisted book. Um, and the follow-on from The Handmaid's Tale, which is a modern classic, and also that I, the fact that I don't really like dystopia as a rule. So, And those two things, I think, meant that I didn't love it as much as Annie and Amanda, but they both really enjoyed it, just as a great sort of almost adventure story. It is quite pacey. It is easy reading. I thought the Aunt Lydia character was wonderful and she was my favourite. I thought she was quite complex and she felt organic to the story. Whereas the other two girls, Jade, is it or Daisy and Agnes, uh, felt a bit more functional as if they were there to move the plot along. And I didn't quite connect with them as much. But Margaret Atwood is still, um, I think she's handled this really well in terms of it being a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. And I think it is worthy of being part of that collection. Just, I think, reading it in the Booker month of, you know, these are the Booker shortlisted books. I didn't feel as if the writing was up to that standard. But having said that, I, I just love Margaret Atwood so um, I really love anything that she does and it was interesting Annie read it and found it a very hopeful book and it made her feel optimistic so I think it you know it does provoke different reactions and is yeah a good one to read a good follow-on to The Handmaid's Tale so that's the testaments and then still on the Booker shortlist Ducks Newbury Port by Lucy Ellman I absolutely loved this. I just found it an exhilarating joy of a book. And I think mainly because of the tone, it was so lively considering how long it is and the fact that it's a stream of consciousness of this Ohio woman um, baking cinnamon rolls and so on. It felt like it really moved along and it felt as if lots was happening, which is a testament to her writing, I think. And I loved the humor. It was making me laugh on almost every second page. I found it very funny. And I loved that it had this, it was like a complex portrait of an ordinary American woman. Um, and that's where you have your Virginia Woolf sort of references and influences from other writers where it does all of that and it's very nuanced and you get this, you know, an ordinary American woman with all her 
anxieties and insecurities and her shyness but on the other hand she's a sort of entrepreneur in a way and raising children and all of those sort of issues but it also then becomes this bigger story about America and a retelling of the history of America almost and a sort of state of the country today with the gun control, the domestic violence, um, all sorts of things. And I, I thought it was, and, and climate change, of course. So it was this amazing achievement and just a real joy to read. So I highly recommend this. It is really long. So I would say to allow a good sort of half hour a day to get into it. It's not something you get, you know, you can do in five minute bursts, but it's, I think really easy reading and really really extraordinary book so that is Ducks Newburyport I did put a review up on the blog just because I thought it needed a longer review than the ones I do on Litzy or Goodreads which are two really short reviews but of course you can't do it justice when it's a thousand page uh, book but that's Ducks Newburyport and then I've read The Pillars by Peter Pilates which is a and he's an Australian author writing about sort of gritty Western Sydney. And um, it probably was a bit unfair to go from Ducks Newburyport to the Pillars because it's it's a such a change of pace. But I really liked his debut, which was called Down the Hume. And this is similar. It's a um, protagonist called Pano, who's gay and an aspiring writer. He lives in Western Sydney or he lives in Sydney, I should say, but Western Sydney is sort of his stomping ground. And his flatmate wants to stop a mosque being built in their suburb. They live in a very new sort of sterile suburb. And he gets involved in that. And he's also ghost writing a memoir for an old school friend called Basil, who's a wheeler and dealer and a property developer and a bit of a show pony. And it's I didn't love this as much as Down the Hume. It didn't feel quite as um, heartfelt. It had a slightly more cynical tone. It's I, What I do like about it is it gives you a side of Sydney that I haven't got from other books. It, you know, opened my eyes and it gives you characters and it does feel quite real that, you know, these young men in Sydney who are not necessarily in other books that I've read. So I I did like that and the writing's quite good and pacey and easy to read. But I found it it's quite it's I think it's meant as a comment on narcissism. And so he's very focused on people's as in Pano, the character is very focused on people's appearances and clothes and the designers and um, what apartment building is going up where and what house they live in and I know, I think it's meant as a comment on that phenomenon in and in Sydney in particular but it just read as superficial and so then I couldn't connect with the characters because they were all quite superficial characters so it was interesting I didn't love it but as I said it's probably a bit unfair reading it after some books that I really you know were so exquisite so um, it's a bit hard to compare but that is the pillars and Amanda and I are doing this for the podcast so we'll be talking about that in a couple of weeks and then I read this gorgeous book A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier and this um, Annie and I read this and interviewed Tracy for the podcast which was a a real treat and we both loved this it was really just a gorgeous gorgeous book it's set in 1932 it's about Violet who is a, one of the surplus women so after World War One there are a lot fewer men than women of marriageable age and she finds that difficult she's single but she doesn't want to just be a spinster or be tied to looking after her mother who's a very difficult character um, and nor does she have many career opportunities so she is sort of looking for her place in the world and she joins a group of broderers in Winchester Cathedral and they're embroidering uh, the cushions and the kneeling sort of cushions for the church and it becomes this fascinating um, well, you meet these fascinating characters and it's all based on real life as in the, you know, these cushions exist. And Tracy was telling us you can go and sit on them if you go to the Winchester Cathedral 
and there, it's just a lovely story but then it's there are also other elements so there it's a bell ringers group as well so she learns a bit about bell ringing you know which is interesting and yeah there, it's just a gorgeous story and her writing is so easy to read it's so um, elegant and yeah Annie and I really loved this so that's a single thread and then finally another joy so it's been a really good month for reading for me this is Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout which I don't think needs much introduction but I've had it on my shelf for ages and I knew that I would enjoy it and I don't know why I haven't read it sooner but Amanda and I just did it for the podcast and we both absolutely loved it and the sequel is coming out shortly so that's why I wanted to read it now before the sequel Olive again comes out I think on the 5th of November in Australia but it's loosely about um, Olive Kitteridge and her husband Henry who live on a, in a coastal town in Maine and all the other characters in the town and it's told in interconnecting stories and just wonderful really funny at times really poignant she's so clever with what she can do within a few pages she can tell you really a whole life of a person and unsentimental which are you know is really refreshing um, and Olive's a great character but they all have their quirks and she also captures uh, the small town dynamics and the dynamics in a marriage especially like the longer marriages and how things change or how they are deal with things over time um, and she's very good on aging and yeah just lots of lots of treats in this one so I'm very excited to read Olive again which comes out next month but that was Olive Kitteridge Find better late than never for that one so that is my September wrap up that was quite exhausting <laughs> what have you been reading tell me uh, your highlights and I'll look forward to seeing you soon bye for now